Welcome to Motocross Action Magazine's 2020 254 stroke shootout. Behind us are the six different bikes that will be ridden by six different pro riders at Glen Helen Raceway for your entertainment value only. We didn't want to have you bored watching our vet, our novice riders on the big screen. Our army of test riders are from all walks of life that are slow, fast, skinny, fat, short, and tall. With all of their collective thoughts that we've gathered over the last few months of testing these 2020 models, our goal is to supply you with the most non-biased opinion possible. So without further ado, here's the 2020 250 four stroke lineup in order from six to first. Sixth place, Suzuki RMZ 250, peak horsepower, 39.50 at 11,700 RPM. Peak torque, 19.43 foot-pounds. Weight, 226 pounds. Over the last decade, Suzuki has been in catch-up mode. For 2020, the RMZ 250 was the victim of benign neglect by the Hamamatsu-based engineers. But back in 2019, Suzuki made updates to the RMZ 250 that mattered, most notably bringing the power output into line with the competition. But as soon as the field of 2020 bikes rolled down the assembly lines, the RMZ 250 didn't have the legs to run with the pack. The 2020 Suzuki RMZ 250 is the slowest and fifth heaviest 250 on the market. If you are looking for a pure bed race bike, the RMZ 250 will probably not make your short list. However, if you are a weekend warrior, play rider, or lower level racer, the RMZ 250's premium low to mid power may just be right up your alley. Most riders can live with everything about this bike if they aren't serious about winning races. No serious racer can live with the atrociously stiff forks and 39 horsepower engine. The RMZ 250 doesn't feel as heavy as it really is. It offers superb cornering prowess. This distinguishing characteristic comes at a price. The RMZ 250 is a turn at all cost chassis, but it is not well balanced. At speed, it loses its stability and starts to shake. We wish we had more positive things to say about the 2020 Suzuki RMZ 250 because we enjoy riding this bike, but we dread lining up on it against the green, blue, orange, white, and red 254 strokes. This is the RMZ 250's fifth consecutive year finishing last place in MXA's 254 stroke shootout. If Suzuki wants to knock the RMZ 250 out of its five-year funk, the bike needs forks that work, electric starting without packing on more pounds, and a power plant that bridges the gap between its competition. Fifth place, Kawasaki KX250. Peak horsepower, 43.26 at 12,800 RPM. Peak torque, 20.13 foot-pounds. Weight, 221 pounds. The KX250 has some serious lungs for 2020. The KX250 engine offers the most peak horsepower of any 254 stroke for 2020. Quite the turnaround, as the KX250 had the least peak ponies in 2019. However, Kawasaki traded its good low to mid power for high RPM peak power. Kawasaki accomplished this by copying KTM's born stroke finger follower valve chain and 14,000 RPM rev limiter. On the dyno, the 2020 KX250 power curve follows the 2020 CRF power curve from the crack of the throttle to 7,500 RPM, where the CRF 250 starts to break away. The Honda beats the KX250 up to 11,700 RPM, where the Kawasaki trades off to make 43.26 horsepower at 12,800 RPM, which is 1,000 RPM sooner than the CRF250. The Kawasaki does rev to 14,000 RPM, but is relatively flat for the final 1,200 RPM. The real battleground for the KX250 versus CRF250 is at peak. It is much lower on the curve, where they stumble significantly coming up on the pipe. The battle is fought on the exit of turns, where neither the green nor red bike can hold a candle to the YZ250F, 250SXF, 
RMZ250 or FC250 in the low to mid transition. Dyno don't take into account throttle response, rev speed, or acceleration rates. And although the 2020 KX250 lacks bottom and power, it comes alive quicker than the Seer F250. And for that reason, it has a better power band than the Honda. All in all, the KX250 engine is impressive. It has a light throttle and revs through its power band rapidly. Its lack of bottom end power can be mitigated on the track by its instantaneous throttle response. This allows riders to make mistakes we cover with just a touch of the clutch. Kawasaki switched from Showa to Kayaba suspension components for 2020 with a bull move. They haven't had much luck with the single spring SFF forks over the last few years. With Yamaha's success and Kayaba SSX forks, it seems like a smart move on Kawasaki's part to switch. The hard part for Kawasaki's engineers has always been getting the valving and spring rates correct. For 2020, the valving was very close. But 5.0 fork springs and 5.4 shock spring don't suit the average 135 to 165 pound 254 stroke rider. Most testers felt the forks were harsh and braking bumps. On smoother tracks with rolling whoops and jumps, the stiff forks didn't seem to bother test riders. Overall, this is a vastly improved Kawasaki KX250. The high horsepower, high RPM engine, and improved suspension make the KX250 a fighter. Kawasaki's budget wasn't big enough to give the hard to start KX250 the electric starter, strong clutch, new plastic, and improved corner it needed to move up in the rankings. Fourth place, Honda CRF 250. Peak horsepower, 42.98 at 13,800 RPM. Peak torque, 20.18 foot-pounds. Weight, 228 pounds. Honda changed its engine philosophy on the CRF250 back in 2018. It went from a low to mid power band to a top end only engine. It was a letdown to say the least. It couldn't get out of its own way on the exit of corners and if it fell off the pipe, it took a frantic clutch hand to get it percolating again. Honda engineers knew early on that they made a mistake with the 2018 engine. So they went back to the drawing boards for 2019. They didn't have the budget for an all new CRF250 engine, so they did the best they could with what they had. They managed to gain almost two horsepower across the power spectrum, but it didn't help the CRF250 where it was at its weakest. It still had a total lack of unusable low to mid power, which killed it in corner exit. For 2020, Honda engineers went back to the drawing boards once again. The new updates were designed to increase low to mid range power, as well as enhance the top end. Honda succeeded. The 2020 CRF250 engine produces one to two more horsepower horsepower from 75 RPM to 10,000 RPM, pulls harder on top and revs out 14,200 RPM. But success in motocross power bands don't come from dyno numbers. It comes in comparison to what the competition has to offer. On the dyno, it is obvious that the CRF250 and KX250 give up significant power to the orange, white, blue, and yellow pack from 6,000 RPM to 8,000 RPM. The problem for the Honda CRF250 is that you feel the lag off the bottom end more predominantly than on the equally weak KX250. The CRF250 is slow to get moving off the crack of the throttle. The clutch needs to be hammered to ensure the bike gets moving. Once the CRF250 is in motion, it spreads its wings and revs with the best of them. We like that you don't have to shift this bike if you don't want to. You could say that the CRF250 revs out further than any production 250 MXA has ever tested, but it takes too long to get there. It was hard for testers to reach peak horsepower at the end of a straight when they were barely moving at the beginning of the straight. This leaves power on the table unused. We have adored the rest of the CRF 250 package since 2018. Although it is the heaviest bike in the class at 228 pounds, the chassis and suspension are awesome. We can say that the 2020 CRF 250 would win this shootout if it had a KTM engine in its superb chassis, but it doesn't. So forget that. In 2020, Honda updated the chassis by going with the same frame that was used on the CRF 450 in 2019. On the track, that stiffness turns into improved stability and more accurate cornering. The shower forks are first rate. They are plush at the start of the stroke and get progressively stiffer at the end. The 2020 Honda CRF 250 offers great handling, suspension, ergonomics, and controls. However, what matters most in the 250 class is the engine package. Not necessarily the most peak horsepower, as the 2020 20 Yamaha YZ250F proves, but the best all-around power band for the majority of 250 four-stroke racers. For the CRF250 to move up in the rankings, it needs a more usable power band that works for more than just AMA pros.
Third place, Husqvarna FC250. Peak horsepower, 43.01 at 13,800 RPM. Peak torque, 20.61 foot-pounds. Weight, 219 pounds. Finally, after six years, the Husqvarna FC250 has stepped out of the KTM shadow. Ever since KTM Stefan Pierre bought Husqvarna from BMW in 2013 and started platform sharing all the major components with KTM, the Husky has been a clone of the orange bike. We have waited for over half a decade for Husqvarna to use something different, and this year they did. Even though Husqvarna and KTM have shared WP suspension components, also owned by Stefan Pierre, for the first time ever, the suspension settings are vastly different on the KTM Husky motocross models. Husqvarna targeted the VET, novice, lighter, and slower riders by going softer and suppler on the settings in comparison to KTM. You might think that this is a step in the wrong direction, but the majority of MXA test riders love the plusher FC250 suspension over the stiffer KTM 250SXF settings. Only our pro-level test riders prefer the 250SXF stiffer settings. The kicker? Husky knows that pros don't run stock suspension. Thus, Husky tried to select spring rates and valving that will make the riders who are Husqvarna core customers happy. We think this is a step in the right direction. What isn't a step in the right direction is Husqvarna's power band. Last year, we complained that the Husqvarna FC250 was suffocated by its closed off airbox. The lack of air muted the FC250's throttle response. KTM went all out and put 10 well-shaped vents in its airbox cover. The result was a snappier throttle response. For some reason, Husqvarna's engineers didn't want to do it. However, since they were ordered to vent the airbox, they sandbagged the result by putting six small slots in the top edge of the airbox cover. Not only were the vents too small to make any difference, they were located in the wrong place to make the power. The result? The FC250 is still starving for air. Husky's decision makes its very powerful engine rev slower than it should. Worse yet, there is a flat spot in the power band that actually dips in power from 9500 RPM to 10,300 RPM. Surprise Surprisingly, it should be known that the 2020 FC250 runs better than the 2019 engine. It revs out faster and offers improved throttle response thanks to mapping changes, just not as much as it could have. The FC250's meter power makes it easier to ride and less aggressive than most high revving 250s, but it is harder to get this bike moving than the 250SXF and YG250F. The clutch lever needs to be flailed by your fingers when the bike exits corners to get it into its sweet spot. Given the fact that we think Husqvarna's suspension setup is better suited to the average 250 rider than the KTM assembly and that Husqvarna and KTM share the same drivetrain, accoutrements, and chassis, it is likely that Husqvarna could have won the 2020 MXA 250 shootout if the engineers wouldn't have been too pig-headed to allow more air in the engine. It's not like Husqvarna didn't know there was a problem. MXA has been complaining about the same issue since 2015. The blame for not winning rests solely on the shoulders of the powers that be at Husqvarna. Second place, Yamaha YZ250F. Peak horsepower, 41.31 at 12,100 RPM. Peak torque, 19.96 foot-pounds. Weight, 226 pounds. Last year, the 2019 Yamaha YZ250F won MXA's 250 four-stroke shootout, and rightfully so, because it was the best all-around bike of 2019. Oh, it had some help. The KTM airbox had issues. The Honda suffered from low-end drought. The Kawasaki was waiting on a new engine. The Suzuki suspension was stiff enough for an elephant, and the Husky took its time getting the peak power. It was a glorious victory for Husqvarna, and something it should be proud of. So proud that it elected to leave it unchanged for 2020, save for a rubber grommet inside the air filter. Now. 12 months later, the landscape of the 254 show class has changed significantly. While Yamaha was basking in the glow of its 2009 victory, KTM, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, and Honda decided to change the playing field. What once was a class dominated by mid-range power plants suddenly turned into a high stakes, high RPM, all or nothing gamble to make the most power at the highest possible RPM. Which means that in 2020, the Yamaha YZ250F is the only load emit engine in a field that includes four 14,000 RPM revers. This isn't the end of the world for the YZ250F because with its mid-range power placement, the YZ250F gets up and goes quicker than any other 254 stroke. No need to feather the clutch at the corners. No need to wait for the RPM to build before shifting to the next gear. No need to rev the engine until glass breaks in the scoring tower's windows. 
the 2020 Yamaha YG250F, which is the 2019 YG250F, gets to the meat of the power band quickly and easily. Because of its unique power band, the YG250F feels more powerful than it actually is. On the dyno, it has less than average horsepower, only beating the RMC250 on peak horsepower. Even where its power is at its best, it is matched by the high RPM Husky and KTM. And after the engine reaches 9,000 RPM, the YZ250F only makes more power than the RMZ250. We know that these facts don't sound all that rosy for the 2020 YZ250F, but dynos don't go to the starting line. And peak power is not as important at power placement, throttle response, and acceleration rates. On the track, every MXA test rider loved the power delivery. However, every rider wanted more top end power and longer intervals between shift points. The MXA test riders ranked the 2020 Yamaha YV250F second overall in the 2020 MXA250 shootout because it is different from the red, green, white, and orange bikes. It's got hit, it burts out of corners, and it is the best all around bike for a novice racer because, unlike the Free Rivers, it isn't a pro focused bike. Even though the bike feels much wider than the rest of the bikes, its width is minimized by its superb Kayaba SSS suspension. It might not turn as sharply as a KTM, Husqvarna, Suzuki, or Honda, but it requires requires very little input in the corners. The MXA test riders love the YZ250F, but be as clear and precise as possible. The 2020 Yamaha YZ250F couldn't win this shootout because the current 250cc environment is not the same as it was in 2019. First place, KTM 250 SXF. Peak horsepower, 43.22 at 13,600 RPM. Peak torque, 20.50 foot-pounds. Weight, 218 pounds. Yeah, we know, you hate KTM. You want any other brand to win, even if it's a KTM built Husqvarna. You are a loyal Honda owner. You believe air forks are a waste of air. You are positive that weight doesn't matter. You know that MXA has it out for Suzuki. You personally know a guy who knows a guy who knows that shootouts are won by the biggest advertiser. And you truly believe that motocross action should be called KTM action. What we know is that the 2020 KTM 250SXF is the best all around race bike on the market. It offers great power across the board, revs to the moon, and has solid mid-range numbers. In 2019, the KTM 250SXF lost MXA shootout due to its closed off airbox, muted mapping, and stiff chassis. It had enough low to mid horsepower to be competitive, but it was slow to get moving out of corners while the 2019 YZ250F was perky and alert. For 2020, KTM made small changes to the 250SXF. The suspension has been made plusher to get rid of the harshness that last year's more rigid chassis brought to the table. A vented airbox cover was added to the equation to floor more air into the previously starved engine. We also believe, after racing the 2020 and 2019 KTM SXFs back to back with both the closed off and vented airbox, that the power band is greatly improved for 2020. The 2020 engine feels more spry off the bottom and revs through its power band quicker than before. In this new era of high RPM 250cc four stroke engines, where 14,000 RPM, the 2020 KTM 250 SXF produces the exact same low to mid horsepower as a Yamaha YZ250F, while gapping the YZ250F from 9,000 RPM on up. It is a rev monster with the mid-range of a torker. You might not feel how much power the KTM 250SXF has from low to mid because it is tuned to run at 14,000 RPM, but it's there. When you add in the lightest weight, bulletproof hydraulic clutch, ingenious air filter, slim ergos, awesome Brembo brakes, electronic sweep, and electric starting, you ice the cake. When it comes to handling, we think that KTM's chromoly steel chassis is the best all-around handling bike on the track. There are bikes that turn sharper, but they stand at mid-corner, head shake at speed, or get loose on exit. The KTM chassis requires the least steering input of any 250 made. It isn't all flash in one aspect of handling. It works well in every possible scenario. The updated and more responsive exact air forks, vented airbox cover, new mapping, and do-it-all power band offer something for riders of all skill levels. This isn't the high RPM KTM of five years ago. That is where Honda and Kawasaki are at with their power bands. This is the only all-encompassing low to top novice to pro engine that can run with the YZ250F down low and KX250 and CRF250 on top. It is the king of 254 strokes for 2020 and the 2020 MXA 250 shootout winner. Mm -hmm.